God, there's a river that never shall run dry. You think they're running out of water on earth when you go to Kroger's. Look at all the people grabbing all that water. But there is a river that never shall run dry, and it flows out of her innermost being. The woman asks the question, where do you get this living water? Almost sarcastically. This was a sensible, though, and a very important question. And so may the Holy Spirit guide us this morning and make sure we answer it rightly. Where do you get this living water, she asked him. And Jesus Christ told her that if she only knew who she was talking to, she would have asked of him and he would have given her living water. They were both at Jacob's well. They were both of them close to it and could look over into it and see uh, down into it. There was some water in it, but the well of Sychar was not a well of living water. You probably know that the expression, which is translated living water, refers to water that springs up from a fountain. Now, we walk by all the time and see puddles of water. Never want to drink that, would you? But if you go to a place where it's bubbling up out of the ground, that's living water. We know it's safe to drink that one. And the well at Sychar was not that type of a well. It was a well of groundwater uh, in the, the gatherings of the neighboring hills. Groundwater is water that has seeped through various layers of sediment stored in the ground, but it's not spring water. It is a flat, a stagnant water, not living water at all. So Jesus uses this illustration in speaking with the woman. Basically, he's saying, you have come here to draw this water out of the well, uh, the mere rainwater that has run into a Jacob's well. But if you had asked of me, I would have given you water of a far better sort, water with life in it, water which would give life to you, water which would be in you a well of water springing up unto eternal life. The woman got the picture, though she did not at first understand its spiritual meaning. And its spiritual meaning is this. That water Jesus refers to is uh, grace, that Jesus has grace in himself, grace to give to sinners, grace to give to those who ask him for it. For he said to the woman, if you only knew who I am, there's that I am again, remember Moses said, who shall I say sent me? I am that I am. Here's that I am. If you only knew who it was you were talking to, if you only knew who I am, you would have asked of me and I would have given you living water. In the Lord Jesus Christ, there is this deep fount of grace always springing up within himself. We read elsewhere in scripture where it says, it pleased the Father that in him, Christ, should all fullness dwell. And so it does. All fullness dwells in Christ. To him, we are told, the Spirit has been given without measure. So there is no meager supply of grace. He has an abundance. You might say his cup runneth over, springing up within himself. And this he is desiring to give away. He won't keep it for himself. He doesn't need it. For himself, almighty and ever blessed as he is, by his own nature, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Spirit, he needs no grace for himself, but he has, or what he has, all in him, he's going to give it away. He came into this world to open up a channel whereby grace could be distributed to all who have needs of thirst. And he gives it away For the asking, almighty grace from God to be had by merely asking. No human can, uh, de uh, merit can demand it. I can't earn my way for it. But if I just ask him for it, if you only knew who I was, or excuse me, I did it again. I'm using proper English when he said, if you only knew who I am, I would have given you living water. And James tells us, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So if any man lack forgiveness, let him ask that of God as well. If any man lack anything that is essential to this present life, 
to his happiness or even to his future life, it is stored up in Christ and it can be had for the asking. We read in scripture, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he would give us his only begotten son, beloved son, what else won't he give us? And so the teaching of the text this morning is this. If ever you are saved, it must be by the grace of God. That grace is in Jesus Christ. It has been put into Jesus Christ, not because he needs it himself, but that he may distribute it. And he does distribute it. And who ask, whoever asks him for it receives it from him. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to he that knocketh shall the door be opened. I'm telling you gospel this morning. I'm not making stuff up. He that knocketh, it shall be answered unto him. Did I make that up? you read that too, haven't you? And when you receive this grace, it will remain in you and not just be like uh, ordinary water, which you drink now and thirst again later, but it will abide in you. It shall turn into, Jesus said, a well of living water. Inside your soul there shall be this ever-springing uh, fountain of life, which shall never cease to flow, be it summer or winter. Jesus said this, This is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God, in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So now let us answer the question that the woman put to Christ. Her question goes something like this. Okay, where did you get this living water? How did you come to have it? If you really do have living water, how did you come by it? If it's not in the well, and even if it were down there, it's a deep well and you have nothing to draw it up with. What an important then question. Where did you get this living water? The King James says, from whence did you get this living water? More modern English, where did you get it from? Lord Jesus, we hear that you have an abundance of grace, treasured up in yourself, which you do freely distribute to those who ask you for it. But how did you come by it, Lord Jesus? How has it come to be stored up in you? Where? Did you get this living water? That's what she asked him. Where did you get this living water? And so to the answer the question, from where, Christ, did you get this living water? Let me answer it for you. He has it in his very nature. Jesus Christ, we are told, is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God by him because he is divine. Jesus said, with God all things are possible and since Jesus Christ is God all things are possible to Jesus we also read that God is love and since Jesus is God then Jesus is also love the earth is the Lord the Lord's and the fullness thereof so God owns everything and Christ is God and so Christ owns everything and has uh, the ability to freely distribute it where did you get this living water Another answer to the Samaritan woman's question is that Christ uh, has this living water, not just in his very nature and because he owns everything, but he has it by divine purpose and appointment. It was the divine plan that Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, should be appointed to be the treasury of grace for all of his elect. He was appointed, given that job. In the council chamber, of eternity it was ordained not that the Holy Spirit but that the Son of God should when the fullness of time had come enter into the world and take upon himself our nature and our self you remember we read before the foundation of the earth was even laid the lamb was already slain it was God's eternal purpose before he even made the earth that he was gonna to have to send his son to redeem those whom he had made he comes here by divine power then and by divine appointment he is authorized to be the Savior, to bestow upon us the blessing of his grace. Now let me illustrate this for you. When a tiny little lady police officer, have you ever seen a little, small, tiny little, like how is she going to wrestle that criminal down? Or if she tries to put, how is she, 
how, how, how can she be a cop? You ever ask yourself that? And, and uh, when, she, when you're coming down the street and you're trying to hit that red light or beat that red light and that little bitty lady holds up her hand and you come to a screeching halt, we don't stop because that officer has by her own strength or authority made us to stop. She has not the wherewithal in her own constitution to stop a 2,000 pound projectile headed straight for her. But it is the authority that has been invested in her in that badge. We stop when she says to, no matter how small she is, because if we don't, the one who sent her will be coming after us to get us. We stop because of who she is representing. If someone from the water company or the gas company come to our door, they bring credentials that, are, that they are duly accredited by the authority which they represent. We want to see their badge, right? No, Pastor, I just let them right on in. Okay, watch the news. Our Lord Jesus Christ comes to men with credentials which prove that he was appointed. I do not my own will but the will of him who sent me. He was appointed by God to this service before all the worlds were made. And he will be divinely sustained in that appointment until time shall be no more. We don't worry about that lady in the cop uniform. But we worry about that power, that authority behind her that sustains her. Jesus Christ shall be sustained in his duly appointed role until time shall be no more. To me... This is incredibly sweet. For when I trust in Christ to save me, I rejoice to know that he is no amateur savior who has come on his own authority or on his own whim and at his own bidding. But behold, the Father himself hath sent him. Mighty Jehovah hath sent him. And he is called the Messiah, the anointed one, the sent one, the Christ of God. He is here on a mission from God. God must accept his son for he sent him into the world for this very purpose. If I bring to God the blood of Jesus as the atonement for my sin, he must accept it. For he himself ordained it as the one acceptable means of reconciliation. We sing in that song. Nothing in my hand I bring, but simply to thy cross I cling. It seems to me then that those are two great answers to the question of the Samaritan woman, where did you get this living water? By his very own nature and by divine appointment. That's where I get the divine living water. And if these are the places from which Christ gets this living water, then he is still able today to bless the children of men. Now, if he had received grace from some temporary source of supply, it would have been exhausted a long, long time ago. But since he received it from his own divine nature, from the purpose and from the plan of God, from the anointing of the Holy Spirit by his own finished work, and from his ever-living power and infinite mercy, since all the fountains of grace are as full today as they ever were, and since they will always be just as full from the same source, that stream of grace continues to flow even today. Today, we can ask the Savior, where can I get this living water? If the deep places from which a well draws its water are always the same, then depend upon it, the supply in the well will always be the same. You know, when we've been to several caves in the ground, Carlsbad, natural bridge. You ever been to one of those? And you go down to the bottom and say, it's always 60 degrees in here. Always. Jesus always has a supply of living water to distribute. There is a river. That's some good news this morning. There is a river that frees the soul from sin. There is a fountain Come to these waters. There is a vast supply. There is a river that never shall run dry. Millions of happy spirits are now in heaven because they've drunk of this living water. 
but Christ is still able to save millions and millions more. There's another song you Lutherans don't sing very much, but it says, though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room. Any of you ever heard that song? There's room at the cross for you? Bunch of Lutherans. I heard a story about a sailor who after months at sea docked and had a fairly large paycheck to cash. It was around $500. As you can tell, the story is quite old. But he goes to Chase Manhattan Bank, upon whom which the check is drawn, and says to the clerk, I don't like to be hard on anybody as you have to pay out all this money here. So I'll just take $100 now, and I'll come again another day for, for some more. I don't want to break the bank. Of course, you can imagine how they chuckled at that country boy's simplicity, the man who thought he might break Chase Manhattan Bank with his paycheck, drawing out such an enormous sum as $500 all at once. We smile at that illustration, and yet that is exactly how many trainer, uh, sinners treat the Lord Jesus Christ. They seem to think that, yeah, I know he can forgive all that and all that, but I'm a different case altogether and he can't forgive me. And they never fully feel the free forgiveness and that river washing over their soul. There is a, you know, I was at the doctor a couple of weeks ago and to get recertified for my blood pressure medicine. And she asked me about the cholesterol medicine, this, and I said, I'm really good with the other one, but I'm not so great on that one. I'd, she said, well, we want to make sure and, and take all your pills and to do all your exercise because we want to stay alive as long as we can. And I said, why in the world would I want to do that? I want to go be with the Lord. I want to go see him in his glory. That's my desire. I'm going to die anyway. I might as well go sooner than later. And she said, well, you know what? I know we're all going to go, but when I go, I want to go with all 10 toes and all 10 fingers. And I said, well, you do got a point there. So take your medicine because it keeps that diabetes down. And even though I have a slight case, barely over the, not a severe case, but I guess I do want to keep all 10 fingers and all 10 toes because Billy tells us, I think it's her sister, that she had one foot cut off and then the next foot cut off and then her hand cut off and eventually she had no uh, extremities. And uh, so I, I guess I'll keep taking the, the, the medicine and, and walking again. Uh, but you're not going to break the bank. There's plenty of living water even for you in Christ Jesus. You would have asked of me and I would have given you living water. Amen.